Could Adolf Hitler, one of history's most notorious figures, have had a soft spot for a little Jewish girl? The story of Rosa Bernilla Ninau suggests that this might have been the case. Now, you might be wondering, how did this unlikely friendship begin? The year is 1933. A six-year-old girl named Rosa Bernilla Ninau visits Hitler's mountain retreat known as the Berghof with her mother. Hitler, who was known to be fond of children, takes an immediate liking to the young girl. Perhaps it was her vivacious spirit or her innocent charm, or maybe it was the simple fact that they shared the same birthday. Yes, you heard that right. Rosa and Hitler were both born on April 20th, a coincidence that seemed to forge an immediate bond between them. From that day forward, their friendship was anything but ordinary. Rosa wasn't just another face in the crowd to Hitler. She was a special friend. She would knit him socks, a simple act that likely brought warmth not just to his feet, but to his heart as well. In return, Hitler would send her signed photos, a gesture that might seem trivial to us, but to a young girl it was a treasured gift. Rosa affectionately referred to Hitler as Uncle Hitler, a term of endearment that further illustrates the closeness of their relationship. And their bond wasn't just confined to the Berghof. They would exchange letters, at least 17 of them, from 1933 to 1938. You might be thinking this is all very strange, and you're right. It was strange. It was unexpected. It was an unlikely friendship, but it was a friendship nonetheless, marked by shared birthdays, exchanged gifts, and heartfelt letters. This was the beginning of an unusual friendship that lasted five years, marked by shared birthdays, exchanged gifts and letters. While it's easy to dismiss this relationship as mere propaganda, there's evidence to suggest it was more than that. The photographs of Rosa Bernile Ninau and Adolf Hitler, captured by Heinrich Hoffmann, were indeed used as propaganda by Nazi Germany. These images depicted a softer side of the dictator, a narrative that was keenly used to manipulate public perception. But let's delve a bit deeper. Beneath the surface of these propaganda photos, we find a series of personal letters exchanged between Rosa and Hitler. These letters, 17 in total, were shared from 1933 to 1938. They revealed a level of affection that is strikingly uncommon in propaganda materials. Rosa, a child, and Hitler, a dictator, communicated in a manner that suggested a genuine friendship. What's more, Rosa even had a nickname for Hitler. She called him Uncle Hitler. Now, this might seem like a trivial detail, but in the context of their relationship, it's quite telling. This wasn't a moniker used for public relations or to further any propaganda. This was a private nickname used in their personal correspondence, and it gives us a glimpse into the affectionate nature of their relationship. And then there were the gifts. She would knit him socks and he would send her signed photos. These exchanges, simple as they might seem, further illustrate the depth of their connection. It wasn't just about the public image, that there was a genuine relationship behind the scenes. To be clear, we're not painting Hitler as a compassionate figure. Far from it. But it's important to explore the complexities of history, to understand the nuances that lie beneath the surface. In a world of hate and manipulation, it seems a genuine bond had formed between the dictator and the young Jewish girl. This bond, as unlikely as it seems, gives us a glimpse into the human side of one of history's darkest periods. It's a reminder that even amidst the most horrifying circumstances, unexpected connections can form. By 1938, the friendship between Rosa and Hitler had endured five years, but that year, their correspondence would come to an abrupt end. Rosa's letters, once a source of joy for Hitler, now lay unopened. In the heart of the Nazi regime, Hitler's private secretary, Martin Bormann, was growing suspicious. He had been observing the unusual friendship between the Fuhrer and the young girl and decided to dig deeper. And as secrets have a way of revealing themselves, Bormann unearthed a truth that would rupture the bond between Rosa and Hitler. Rosa's grandmother was Jewish. Bormann, a staunch anti-Semite, saw this as a threat to Hitler and the image of the Nazi regime. He took immediate action, putting an end to the exchange of letters between the young girl and the dictator. Rosa's letters were intercepted and Hitler's responses, if any, were never sent out. The final letters they had exchanged were filled with warmth and affection. Rosa talked about her school and her friends. Hitler, on the other hand, shared anecdotes from his daily life. 
a side of him rarely seen by the world. Their letters, once a bridge between two vastly different worlds, now served as a reminder of a friendship that could never be. But it seems, Hitler didn't forget Rosa, even after their correspondence had ended. He would often ask about her. He wanted to know if she was doing well, if she was happy. It was as if he was trying to hold on to a piece of his humanity that was fast slipping away. And Rosa, despite the abrupt end to their friendship, kept the letters, holding on to the memory of a man who to her was just Uncle Hitler. This strange friendship, born out of shared birthdays and knitted socks, had left a lasting impression on both their lives. Despite the forces that drove them apart, it seems their bond left a lasting impression on both. What does this unusual friendship tell us about Hitler or about the complexities of human relationships in general? Let's delve into this. On one hand, this friendship could perhaps be seen as a chilling testament to Hitler's ability to manipulate and deceive. He was, after all, a dictator known for his propaganda machine. In the midst of all the horror he was orchestrating, he managed to maintain a seemingly tender relationship with a young girl, Rosa Bernile Nienau, often referred to as the child of the Obersalzberg. This could be seen as a disturbing demonstration of his ability to compartmentalize, to separate his personal interactions from his political actions. On the other hand, this unexpected friendship challenges our understanding of Hitler's character. Despite his monstrous deeds and his anti-Semitic views, he formed a bond with a child who was, by his own definition of the term, part Jewish. This raises unsettling questions about the nature of prejudice and hate. Can a person genuinely care for an individual while simultaneously advocating for the persecution of that individual's ethnic group? This paradox is deeply troubling, yet it seems to have existed within Hitler's relationship with Rosa. The story of Rosa Bernilla Nienau and Adolf Hitler also underscores the complexities of human relationships. It's a stark reminder that even in the most unlikely and disturbing of circumstances, connections can form. This doesn't excuse or diminish the atrocities Hitler committed, but it does highlight the often baffling nature of human interactions. It's a stark reminder that people, even those who commit heinous acts, are not simply one-dimensional caricatures of good or evil. In the end, the story of Rosa Bernilla Nienau and Adolf Hitler serves as a chilling reminder of the paradoxes that often lie at the heart of human relationships. It's a stark testament to the complexities of the human character and a sobering reminder of the capacity for contradiction within us all. So, was Rosa Bernilla Nienau the daughter of Hitler? The answer is no. But their story, as unsettling as it may be, is a testament to the intricate tapestry of human nature. This was a friendship, a unique bond, that transcended the usual barriers of age, status, and most strikingly, morality. Rosa was not Hitler's daughter, but a child who found an unlikely companion in one of history's most infamous dictators. Their narrative also brings to light the immense power of propaganda. It was a tool skillfully wielded by the Nazi regime, one that manipulated perceptions and shaped realities. The photos of Rosa and Hitler were not just snapshots of an odd friendship, but part of a larger orchestrated campaign to soften the Fuhrer's image.